Hey guys, today I'll be doing a quick um, overview of basic trigonometric functions and how to, you know, apply those in biomechanical problems, as well as the inverse of these functions. So um, today we'll just kind of focus on, you know, your system, the triangle, the components of a triangle, and actual definitions of the trigonometric functions that we use. So. Um, let's say we're taking this angle here, we'll call it theta. Since it's unknown, it's an unknown angle that we're using, we'll call it theta. Later we'll define a value, by that I mean a numerical value. So for now, any sort of unknown angle, we'll call theta. So, um, this angle over here is basically the angle that we need to consider for the following you know, problems that we will have. So we have to know the components that make this angle. So we know this as the hypotenuse. So we'll label it here. And the angle that, or the, sorry, the length that makes the angle with the hypotenuse, so sort of on the same side as the angle you can call it, it is called the adjacent, the adjacent side. And there's one more side which we have not labeled or we do not know. And this side is the opposite side. Why is it called the opposite? Well, the way how I kind of confirm this for myself is that I take a pen um, and line it up with the corner from where the angle is formed and it's pointing to the opposite side. So this is the opposite side. And we know this as the hypotenuse because um, this is going to be the longest length of the triangle. So if we if we do the a squared plus b squared equals c squared, c squared being our hypotenuse, this length is going to be the longest, right? So since we sort of figured out our triangle, let's give the definitions for those basic trigonometric functions. And it is very important that you remember these. These are basis. This is a sort of a basis for all physics and um, biomechanics calculations. It's imperative that you understand and know how to use these um, properly. So the first one, let's go with sine. So the sine function, and we always have to incorporate the unknown that we're looking for, or the angle, not, sorry, not the unknown, the angle in question. So sine theta, I know that angle is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse. So sine theta is equal to the opposite length from this theta over the hypotenuse. And when you do all your calculations in math, everything should, it, it will work out. So um, we pick this opposite length because it's opposite to that angle. If we were choosing this angle to sort of, you know, figure out or explore or whatever, then this length would be the opposite, right? Okay. Then we have cos is equal to the adjacent length over height hypotenuse. So I just uh, use three letters because it's sort of faster. You don't have that much time when you're doing this on an exam. Oh, and remember the theta. So tan theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Okay? Now, let's see, um, let's assign a value to the um, angle over there and see if we can figure out the length. Okay, so let's say if this angle is, let's do some random. So let's say that theta on here, theta is equal to 63.4 degrees. Okay? So, and we're trying to find, let's pick any random side, let's say the opposite side. Um, and 
the hypotenuse, we must have um, one given length to figure this out because if we're given two unknowns, then it's impossible to sort of find it. Um, not impossible, but it's really hard to find the other length. So we're given a length, a length. Let's say the hypotenuse is equal to hypotenuse length, height length, equal to 55.9 newtons. So that's magnitude. Okay, so we have the angle, we have the hypotenuse, and we want the opposite side. So which one will we select? Um, okay, this bad boy. Why? Why are we going to choose this trigonometric function, the sine function? Well, because it involves the opposite side, the hypoten and the hypotenuse and an angle. And we have these two, so we can isolate and figure out for that. We will not use these cos or tan because, well, we don't have the adjacent. Well, we yeah, we don't have the adjacent. We're, we're, it's not that we don't have the adjacent, sorry. It's because we're not trying to find the adjacent length yet. We have the hypotenuse. Tan, we need to find the opposite, and we don't have the adjacent, so that's two unknowns. Okay, so let's just get to this. So, our angle, sine 63.4 is equal to opposite, which is unknown, over our hypotenuse length, which is 55.9 newtons. So, how are we going to isolate for opposite? Well, this is, we have to carry this number across the equal sign. And when you do that, it becomes a multiplication, since it's a divisor on this side. So, carry this over. So, 55.9 multiplied by sine 63.4, this is equal to our opposite length, right? So, say if we do all the calculations, so sine 63.4 times 55.9, this gives us 49.98, we could round that to opposite length, we could round that to 50 newtons. These lengths will never be longer than the hypotenuse. That's just a little side note that you should know. Okay, so we have the opposite side as 50. Now, let's say um, we want to find this angle. Actually, no, we'll do that in a separate um, uh, video, or in the same video, just a little later. Now, let's say if we want to try and f try and find this length, what would we use? This, right? Why? Because we have the we want to find the adjacent and we want to find the hypotenuse. So I encourage you guys to try use this equation to figure out cos. The answer should be around 25 newtons. So see if you get that. Now for something a little different, I will show you how to use the inverse. So the inverse functions um, these are used when we're trying to figure out angles in a right angle triangle. So, oh, one more important thing. Um, these trigonometric functions uh, are understanding where right angle triangles are and what trigonometric functions you need to use is important. So you sort of kind of have need to have a vision for this right angle triangle spotting. Anyways, let's say if we're trying to find this angle. We're given all the lengths. How do we do that? Well, since we're given lengths, we have two unknowns, or we have two knowns for each trigonometric function. The only unknown is the angle. So let's say we're trying to find this this angle. We'll go for this angle first. We can use anything tan, whatever. So, let's use cos. So, cosine theta is equal to the adjacent, which we know is 70, right? 
This is the adjacent over the hypotenuse over there, 72.3. So we're trying to isolate for this. How do we do that? Well, we divide this by cos. If we, that gets rid of cos, and we have to divide this, the other side of the equation by cos. But this is inverse, right? This is writing this as basically times 1 over cos. 1 over cos is the inverse. We don't really write it like that. We call it the arc of that trigonometric function. So arc sine, um, I think it's arc cos. So it will be 70 over 72.3 multiplied by the inverse is equal to what we isolated as theta. Oops, that's really bad. So, on the calculator, it's written as let's see, 70 over 72.3 as multiplied by cos over negative 1. Right? So, to do that, you'll have to press second function and on the calculator. So I'll, I'll sort of show you it here. If you can see, I'm not too sure. So we have 70 divided by 72.3 is equal to that. So you press the equal sign, then we press second function cos. And that's automatically going to multiply it equal to 14.49. So this angle equals 14.49. Okay, perfect. And if you want to double check that, try using sine, right, of, to, you know, kind of double check the same angle. So sine is equal to, sine theta is equal to 18 over 72.3. So it's the same thing. We're dividing it by sine. So therefore multiplying it by sine negative one is equal to and it will work out to fourteen point four nine. Or something really close to it. Okay? And I hope you guys sort of understand how to um, apply these inverse functions as well as basic trigonometric functions. So it's important to understand that the inverse functions are used when you are trying to find angles within a right angle triangle. So from the top, what we did, we defined the basic trigonometric functions and we calculated lengths from those when we are given an angle and another length. So once we're given one angle and let's say the hypotenuse, we're able to figure out all the other sides and lengths for the triangles or magnitudes. Usually in biomechanics is forces. And I'll do some specific examples soon. Here, we have learned how to use the inverse or the arc of those basic trigonometric functions. And this, these are used when you are trying to find angles within that right angle triangle.